Folks, the Lincoln University Alumni Association Board of Directors uh, in Missouri says it has issued a no confidence vote in the leadership of the Lincoln University Board of Curators following the uh, report's uh, release. First of all, they found no evidence of bullying against former Lincoln University, Lincoln University Administrator Antoinette Bonnie Candia Bailey. She was the former Vice President for Student Affairs who wrote a 12-page letter to Lincoln University President John Mosley, the alumni and faculty accusing the president of bullying and harassment before she died by suicide on January 8th. The board of directors expressed concern with how the investigation was conducted by the law firm of Lewis Rice and questioned how interviews were selected. In a letter addressed to the board of curators, the alumni association uh, said the following. How we were given, they said, we were given a president with minimal athletic leadership abilities and placed in a role requiring even stronger critical thinking skills. As such, guys, please put the letter up. As such, his lack therefore, his lack thereof has become evident throughout his two and a half years of service and for the board of curators to reassert this flawed decision and to act without change in this administration is further evidence of their inadequacies to care for and protect the interests of the university's mission and its sovereignty at a historically black college and university. The Alumni Association is calling for Mosley's resignation. Um, what we are seeing here, um, I mean, that, that we read a lot of that letter on the air, Lauren, and man, it was brutal. It was brutal to read uh, what this sister wrote and just how debilitated uh, and offended she was uh, by this. Yeah, it's going to be hard to, uh, I think, though, make that case moving forward, even with a letter. These cases are really hard to make uh, when you have to uh, figure out a way uh, to make someone else responsible for the trauma that someone may have been going through, even though she documented it. So it'll be interesting to see how that moves forward. But it's a real tragedy that that happened because... Obviously, it didn't have to happen. Uh, last Thursday, there was a group of young professors, black professors, who had a, a Zoom call. Actually, the Zoom call at the exact same time I was on the show. But I listened to the second hour of it, and she, they were talking about some of the experiences they've been having as professors at work around the country. And uh, obviously, you know, there's a trend going on, uh, an anti-blackness trend, and we see it with the DEI discussion, the CRT discussion. And this is all, to me, uh, kicked off by Donald Trump, kicked off by the reaction to the presidency of Barack Obama. And it continues. And it continues on a lot of levels. And, and frankly, uh, the forces of anti-blackness are becoming more and more organized. Indeed. Uh, and, um, you know, this is where, uh, Reese, uh, oversight matters. And this is alumni saying, man, we don't trust this board at all. And this university has a very interesting history because uh, for the longest, it was a majority white HBCU. Uh, mm. And late as the 1990s, it was a majority white. Then it began to switch. Mm. Now it's 56 percent black, 27 percent white. Uh, and so you've sort of had that uh, dichotomy uh, and that that sort of uh, battle back and forth. Uh, I mean, wh who, why are they protecting this man? I, I don't understand the board that is. Um, I don't know what more of an extreme vote of no confidence you can get than a person dying by suicide. Um, you, yeah. How can you say there's no evidence when the allegation is a firsthand account from the person who took her own life? And, you know, you can't just necessarily pin that on him. But at the end of the day, if you're at an HBCU, black lives have to matter. And that professor's life shouldn't matter more to the board of curators. So I applaud the alumni board for for making this known, because I, I feel like the common thread through a lot of these stories that we're covering about HBCUs, whether it's an attack from within or an attack from the outside of HBCUs, is there's a lack of urgency and there's a lack of of understanding the severity of the moment. It's kind of seems like dilly dallying from one crisis to the next and being a little bit too passive. And it's not to criticize people who are on the front lines doing the work, but it, it's like, it kind of makes you wonder like, what more 
needs to happen to shake this shit up a little bit and to make people really stand 10 toes down in the the whole uh, charge of why we have HBCUs. They're supposed to be a safe haven. They're supposed to be a place of excellence and, and community. And that just seems to be getting stripped away or being tossed aside from even the people who are charged with, with, with making sure that environment exists in that way. Greg? I agree. Arisi's right. I mean, this is the thread. Um, Lincoln University of Jeff City, Missouri, was founded by the Buffalo Soldiers, brothers and sisters. That was um, 1865, the 62nd and the 65th Colored Infantries. These men were coming out of the Civil War. They were making $13 a month. In some kind of way, they raised $5,000. That's why there's a statue on Lincoln University's campus of the Buffalo Soldiers. These brothers founded Lincoln University. And you're absolutely right, Roland. It was an inversion, and now it's back majority uh, black. But Reese is right. This ties directly to the Tennessee State story. And you trying to get uh, our rather lethargic uh, representative love to wake up and take some action or find somebody in that legislature who will, making the point uh. that this be a federal lawsuit for all of the public HBCUs, but you put your finger on it when you looked at that board. These hillbillies in Tennessee drew that board up a long time ago. So you're not going to try to persuade them to do anything different. In Missouri, at Jefferson City, the governor appoints that board. That racist, that white nationalist governor, Mike Parsons, the same one that uh, pardoned those hillbillies that were waving guns at the Black Lives Matter protesters, uh, Patricia and uh, Mark McCloskey, who had them guns out in the front of their house as the marches were going by, and he pardoned them. This is the same one, the white nationalist governor of Missouri, that was anti-CRT, so you better believe that those trust those people who were on the board who were on the board who cleared this white ex basketball coach he was a, a, a basketball coach at North Carolina Central now he's over here slopping off the black community as a basketball coach at Lincoln and then he goes and gets a piece of a degree and they elevate him and make him the president of this historic university you better believe that his white nationalist lord and protector surrounded him with a board that would clear him. This is intellectual warfare and it's full spectrum warfare. We can no longer afford to talk with these people as if we have a common interest. Their interest is white supremacy. Our interest is our common humanity. And we got to roll over them like the sea. They're going to let this sister's death be washed in white supremacy and act like it never happened. I hope her family sues that shit out of the governor, out of that man, and everybody else. Whether they win or not, you got to fight with both fists. You told love the right thing, brother. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.